Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to today's Ramadan Reminder. Inshallah, today we're going to talk about a very important hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, truthfulness leads to righteousness, and righteousness leads to paradise. And a man keeps on telling the truth until he becomes a truthful person. Falsehood leads to al-fajur, wickedness, evil doing. And al-fajur leads to hellfire. And a man may keep on telling lies till he is written before Allah as a liar, reported by Bukhari. There is another narration in which the Prophet ﷺ said, a person carries on telling the truth until he is written down as a truthful person. A very important hadith to reinforce the honesty of us and in our speech. A lot of the time people tell white lies because they don't see any harm in it. But continuing to do that will cause us to become liars with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who will then in turn write us down as a liar. And this is a very stern warning in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that once we are written down as a liar due to the consequence of our, our, of our lies is a very, very dangerous and, and serious matter that we should take in consideration. And we should reinforce this in our houses and amongst our children, because a lot of the time when we, the children ask a question, a lot of the parents absentmindedly answer their question just to get the children off their back. But many times, they, if, especially if it's due to religious questions or any questions about general knowledge about life, nature, or anything like that, which parents may struggle to answer. Usually what parents may do is answer the question without really looking into the details, the authenticity of what they're telling their children. And when children grow up and find out the honest truth, about to their questions, what they start to realize what their parents had originally told them was actually incorrect and false. And this is lies. This is the lies that they are being used to hearing and in turn will not see the seriousness of honesty within the household. So you need to reinforce that honesty within the household. You need to make sure that if you do get some of those tricky or difficult questions, try your best to answer them, research the answers with them. And don't be shy to say to them, right, look, okay, well, I'm not sure about this. Let's, let's find the answers out together. This transparency really helps a positive upbringing within the household. It helps you bring the children up in a positive environment where you've reinforced one honesty. And second, what you've reinforced with your children is that you haven't just given them an answer. You've, you've gone out and you've researched with them. And it, it will earn respect. You know, a lot of people think that uh, you, you know you you somehow going to look like you have you're inferior. You don't have the knowledge, but that inshallah should gain you the respect of your children. I know a teacher who teaches um, children, and she said every time the children ask her something, she said, "I'll check you up." And one of the children asked her. One of the child, sorry, asked her that why is it every time they ask her a question, she says she'll check you up. And she said, because I don't want to ever tell you something that is not true. And those children, even though the teacher could not have answered many of their questions, respected her due to her honesty. Um, there is an incident in which when I was studying in, at the university, one of the top universities in the UK, we asked our lecturer a question and she turned around and said, I'm going to have to check this up because I'm not sure about this answer, but I will come back to you because it is haram to give you an answer if I am not 100% sure. And this is, mashallah, the real deed. When we are not afraid of saying that, you know what, I'm, I'm, I've forgotten, I'm, I'm not sure, let me check. And, and there's no shame in admitting that. There's no shame in admitting that we sometimes feel like we need to have all the answers. Well, we may not have the answers. It doesn't mean that we have inferior knowledge. Those people who have studied martial arts have, have knowledge, have read many hadiths, many books, have studied many fictions. But sometimes what happens is sometimes they forget because people forget. They, for, they may forget a ruling. So they may have to go back and check it. It is far better saying to somebody who's asked you a question that, I will go back and check it, double check it before giving you an answer. And this is more appropriate, more correct. And it avoids lying. It avoids giving out incorrect information because of course we're talking about lying, but it also when we give out incorrect information that falls under falsehood 
and we need to be careful about falsehood because we we're so you know, we're so worried about being embarrassed that we fall into this trap of lying. I know people when they ask you questions or um, why you know why have you um, organized this event on this day and you may say oh uh, we, uh, the venue was available just on that day uh, and you didn't really check if the venue was available on other days but because you want to um, you know give this person an answer you want to you know you don't want to open a a debate about the you know uh, bookings on the other days what you've done is you've lied and we have to be careful about the lies because that's what determines our character if we are lying and we're not taking care of that then this means that our character is not a real islamic character that we can be proud of so that will lead us to hellfire if we're not taking care of our speech this will lead us to the hellfire and we really need to be careful about how we communicate and how we give that communication to children this is why i'm stressing on the positive communication amongst children inshallah the Prophet Salam said, a man is reckoned to be a liar when he gives voice to all that he hears. He said, as for cases of indirect allusion, are they enough to keep a Muslim from lying? Basically, what this hadith means is when the Prophet Salam says in another hadith, a person, it's enough to consider a person a liar when he hears everything that he hears, he speaks of. But, excuse me, for example, we have people that Whatever they hear, they go and narrate that to others. Okay, so-and-so said this, so-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. And we're constantly reporting, you know, we're reporting on what people have said. We're reporting what one person said about the other. And we carry tales, as we've talked in one of the other earlier reminders about Nima al Liba. We talked about the, take, the carrying of tales, backbiting, slandering. All of that comes could, could come into it because when you hear things, you're you're not uh, you're not sure in what context they've said it. You're just and you and you don't know that whatever you're speaking of. Every time you hear something and you go and tell other people, you you are not aware of what can be the cause of a problem. What could cause an issue between two groups of people or two individuals? So it's very important to take care, guard your speech. Don't allow your tongue to run free. And speak every single thing that you've heard or you come in contact with somebody and they've said something and you go around telling or talking to people. So this is one of the really important reminders that I would like you to consider, inshallah. So being guarding your speech, ensuring you are not lying. For a person who lies will be written down with Allah as a lie. And this is something that I teach in my madrasas. I really enforce that with the children that I'm teaching. And it's really important that you, inshallah, carry this um, hadith and carry this reminder with you, inshallah. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.